Welcome back to Inside the Vault. We're talking gadgets and technology. A lot of today's games are so real. Some of them are used as simulators for soldiers and pilots. Others are just the ultimate fun, like Gran Turismo 5. Motor Trend Editor-in-Chief Angus McKenzie is with us. And this much uh, we know about the, the driving games that are out there. And I guess the ultimate question is, how real are these things? Well, with Gran Turismo 5, it's as real as it gets. I mean, these tracks are real race tracks. They're mapped to within a fraction of an inch, and they look real. Even the graffiti on the legendary Nürburgring Nordschleife has been replicated in the game. And the virtual cars in there behave just like their real counterparts. They've worked these things out so that when you turn the steering wheel or move the pedals, the car on the screen reacts exactly how a real car would work in similar circumstances. The way the tracks are laid out is identical, the visuals are identical, and the cars perform in much the same way. And you can choose different types of cars, so you can, you can graduate the performance level and the car will react differently according to the performance level. But if a race car driver were to play this game, would he feel like he were on the racetrack? Well, interestingly enough, you know, Formula One teams have used simulators as sophisticated as this to train their drivers. So, Angus, who would we be able to go to here to figure out how real this might be? Well, we sent pro race car driver Justin Bell to Laguna Seca to find out that very question. I'm here at the famous Laguna Seca Raceway, where in the past I've won a world championship, I've even set a production car lap record here, so you could say I know the place pretty well. I'm here today with the incredible Corvette ZR1, 638 horsepower, the fastest ever production car GM produced. And you think to yourself, what could be better than that? Well, to some people, it may be sitting on their couch driving a simulator. So I'm going to head down to Venice, California to the Sony PlayStation Gran Turismo Studios to find out. Same car, same driver, same racetrack and see just how true to life they really are. Oh, I'm off to a good start. Bloody hell, this is fun. Oh, that's not a bad time. I wonder how that compares to me on the real racetrack. Now this is a little bit more like it. This is my reality. <laughs> I know this track well, and I'm telling you, this is amazingly accurate. Now I'm back on the real Laguna Seca. It's, it's actually amazing to me, the accuracy that they had on the sort of physics of the game, because the reference points, I'm picking up these marker boards, three, two, one, as I turn in, it's exactly the same place. I didn't realize it as much when I went the other way, but now coming back into the real world gives me a huge appreciation for it. This is so fast. Easy, Justin. I'm just not sure I'd have done that on the track with a $130,000 car. Oh. There is nothing like the fear of death to focus your mind. Boom. Zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds and 205 mile an hour top speed. This is the famous corkscrew. My heart rate's going. Every sense is engaged right now. I'm so going to struggle to beat this on the track. In the real world, we still have so many more variables. For example, the G-Force and the ZR1. Wow! Oh, this is going to be surprisingly close to my record in the real car. Oh! There goes the cameraman's head. Coming out onto the straight, onto the finish straight. There's nothing more I can do apart from full throttle. Snatching fourth gear, will I, won't I, crosses the line. The crowd goes wilder, if I could find them. It's a good time, but is it good enough? Oh, I tell you what, nothing beats the real thing. But apparently it does, because the virtual Justin was a few tenths quicker than me in the ZR1. And that's what's amazing to me. For all this lap time, all the dynamics of it, I was only a couple of tenths slower than on the game. Perhaps on a couch right now, doing GT5, may be our next world champion. <laughs> Tenths of a second difference. So, I mean, it was pretty realistic. It was. I mean, Justin knows that track very, very well. He's driven cars for us there before. He knows every inch of that track. So he could use his knowledge and compare. There was no differentiation. Also, the Corvette ZR1 that he drove, the real car, performed exactly like the avatar in the game. The difference was, though, as you notice, Justin, he mentioned the G-forces are different, and that's the crucial thing that's missing from these games. You don't get that sense of the, 
car moving around and the load that comes on your body as you're going through those corners. Jill got a sense of it. She was hopping around and doing that thing and pushing it forward. And I was trying, but I wasn't going anywhere. So I haven't mastered that. I think we need a rematch. Actually never seen, though, that done, where someone who really did understand sort of gaming and did understand what it was like to be on the track, that's a pretty remarkable simulation there. It is, but you know, will it ever train drivers? I don't know, because the thing that's missing is the, the sensitivity that happens where the rubber meets the road. And that's what separates world champions from the rest of us schmucks, is that they can almost predict before the car's moving what's going to happen. And that's what you won't get in the simulated world. And if you crash here, you can go play again. Well, as Justin says, nothing like the fear of death to concentrate the mind. Absolutely. All right, we're back inside the vault right after this.